pump fails to improve mortality rate in cardiogenic shock patients. The IABP shock 2 study. Please. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to present um, the summary of our result of our so-called IABP shock 2 trial. Um, these are my disclosures. Um, I am very uh, thankful to all the organizations which helped to perform this trial. This is mainly the German Research Foundation, the German Heart Research Foundation, the German Cardiac Society also, and the Arbeitsgemeinschaft Leitende Kardiologische Krankenhausärzte in Germany. And we also got um, unrestricted grants by Marquet and by Teleflex, which are the producers of interiotic balloon pumps um, in the world. So, a few words. The interiotic balloon pump is one of the oldest medical products we have in um, cardiology. It's older than every stand, older than every drug, drug eluting stand, and it is now used for nearly five decades um, for the treatment of patients with cardiogenic shock. And it has been used in several millions of people to treat them and to, um, to support them. And this is what the guidelines say. So the ESC guidelines until yesterday, because yesterday the guidelines, we have the new STEMI guidelines, and this has, has been downgraded, but until yesterday it was a class 1C recommendation, which means it's a very high class recommendation to use an interiotic balloon pump for patients in cardiogenic shock. And the American guidelines, the US guidelines, say it's a class 1B recommendation, which also means it's a very high class recommendation. That such an antibiotic balloon pump should be used. However, if we look for the evidence, what we currently have for the treatment of patients with cardiogenic shock, it's um, very conflicting. If we look for patients who get no reperfusion, you can see this is our only registry data because currently there, there was no randomized clinical trial for patients in cardiogenic shock. If we don't perform Reperfusion, what we can't, we shouldn't do because we know that reperfusion can improve the mortality of these patients. Then we have, it seems that we have a reduction in mortality. If we perform thrombolysis, and it has also been previously shown that thrombolysis is not effective in patients with cardiogenic shock, then we have a reduction in mortality of approximately 18%. However, if we perform primary PCI, which is the only one which has been shown to reduce the mortality, it seems, according to registry data, we always have to be very cautious, um, it seems to be that these patients have a 6% mortality increase. If you put all these things together in this uh, meta-analysis, you can see we have a reduction of 11% um, in mortality. This was the reason why we said, okay, we have to perform a large-scale randomized clinical trial that we can show that the antibiotic bloom pump can improve the clinical outcome of the patients. Because um, of the limited evidence we currently have, the interiotic balloon pump is currently only used in 25% um, of the patients in Europe. And we have also data from the, um, from the, um, um, from the United States where it is, has been shown that it's only used in 39% of the patients, despite the high class one recommendation in the guidelines. So according to the recommendation, the interiotic balloon pump is currently underused. However, this is mainly because the cardiologists did not believe that the interiotic balloon pump is really beneficial because we um, only had this limited evidence. So that's the reason why we performed this large-scale German multi-center trial. It was a um, classical trial with the data safety monitoring board, also the steering committee, and also the clinical event committee. And as I already mentioned, it was supported and it was under the patronage of the German Cardiac Society also the German Heart Research Foundation. It was also supported by the ALKK and the German um, Research Foundation. As you can see here, 37 sites in Germany included or enrolled patients into this randomized clinical trial. We already altogether um, randomized 600 patients and with these 600 patients, it's, this is the um, largest trial which has been performed, the largest randomized clinical trial in patients in cardiogenic shock, as you can see here. We also um, had a prospective registry. We, um, in this registry, there are 190 patients which were excluded due to the exclusion criteria which were defined in the protocol. As you can see here, 300 patients were randomized to the interiotic balloon pump, 299 to control, 
and one patient was lost at follow-up in the IRBP group, and one patient withdrew informed consent um, during the first 30 days. So altogether, we could analyze 300 patients for the primary endpoint analysis, which was 30-day mortality, and 298 patients in the control group. And this is very important. These were all patients with acute myocardial infarction, which should undergo early revascularization, because this is the thing what we currently know, which is um, evidence-based. And this is the primary study endpoint, as you can see here. The control group had a mortality of 41%, which is um, approximately the mortality which we have seen in previous randomized clinical trials and also in registries, we know that um, there's a very high mortality for patients in cardiogenic shock. And the interiotic balloon pump group had very similar mortality, which was 39.7%. And this was not statistically significant. As you can see here, with a p-value of 0.9, we use the um, statistical test of a log rank test, or also if we use a sheet square test. So altogether, this trial was a negative trial, and we could not show that the interiotic balloon pump, which has been highly recommended in guidelines that it can improve the mortality. We also looked for several subgroups, as you can see here. There's, there was no subgroup according to the p-value for interaction, as you can see here, which had a benefit from the use of the interiotic balloon pump in these patients with cardiogenic shock undergoing early revascularization. So in summary and conclusion, I skipped all the secondary endpoints, but I can tell you that the secondary endpoints were all also negative. There was no improvement by the interiotic balloon pump for all the secondary endpoints which we looked for. So uh, one other thing is the interiotic balloon pump was safe. We did not see more complications with the interiotic balloon pump, which is very important. Nevertheless, the interiotic balloon pump did not reduce the 30-day mortality in this large-scale randomized multicenter trial in cardiogenic shock patients complicating an acute myocardial infarction and undergoing early revascularization. And the primary study endpoint, as mentioned, um, is supported by a lack of benefit in any of the secondary endpoints. And this trial is also published um, now online in the New England Journal of Medicine. Thank you very much. Thank you.